Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Reform United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online and hope that you're truly fed by the worship of our God this day. Today is a communion Sunday, so those online need to prepare their communion elements of bread or cracker and juice or wine prior to the celebration of the Lord's Supper later in the service. As announced last Sunday, Friday, September 16th, Friday, September 16th, Trinity Reform UCC will hold a carry-out fall festival. Menu items will include chili, chicken corn soup, chicken barbecue, and a variety of baked goods. And the pickup times will, will be from 4 to 6 p.m. There'll be no pre-orders, so it will be a first-come, first-served basis until the supply is last. Uh, it is, it is carry-out, so you'll <clears throat> come to Jubilee Hall, and you'll go through the line to get your food, and then we hope that you'll support this a very important fundraiser this year. On Sunday, September 18th, we will begin Sunday school for both children and adults. We are considering having Sunday school on the first and third Sunday of the month, and then having fellowship time on the second and fourth Sunday of the month. Your input is greatly needed, so please let Jane Coons or myself know your preference. By having fellowship time on the second and fourth Sundays, the teams will only have to sponsor once in two months rather than once a month, uh, with the exception, of course, of months with five Sundays. Trinity's Book House at the Bell continues to desperately need children's books. So if you, if you have any, please bring them to the church on, on a Sunday or drop them off Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday during office hours. We are actively collecting for the food pantry once again, and items can be left on the table in the front of the crying room at the rear of the sanctuary. So please consider dropping off some non-perishable food items for those less fortunate than ourselves. And of course, grocery cards are for sale. Cards will be on sale in the narthex after service, or you can call the church office or Weiss, uh, for Weiss or Giant cards. Uh, you can pick them up here at the church, or you can even have them delivered. This has been an amazing fundraiser for the church and one that helps us stay open it allows you to help the church without having to give more. So, uh, and it also allows us to continue our very important mission work in our community as well. So please support this very important fundraiser of purchasing grocery cards. If anyone needs assistance or knows someone who might need a phone call or visit, please let us know. The visitation team is more than ready to lift the spirits of those who need it. And as I remind you each week, of course, be careful. Wear a mask when you're in large crowds or in confined spaces, cough and sneeze in your elbow, wash your hands frequently, and of course, get your vaccines as well as your boosters, as this is a wonderful way to show your love of neighbor. And finally, as we prepare for worship, 
Let us empty our minds of anything that would distract you from realizing the presence of God, Holy Spirit, during this time of worship. Let us now experience God's Spirit as we join together in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. Good morning. It says it's fall by the calendar, but it doesn't feel like fall yet, does it? Please join me in the call to worship. Here the choices God sets before us, life and prosperity or death and adversity. Oh God, you have searched us and known us. You know our thoughts and every move we make. Listen to the ordinances of our God. Love God and walk in the way God commands. Oh God, we will listen for your words. We will seek to walk on the paths you intend. Happy are those who delight in God's law. Blessed are all who meditate on God's word. Wonderful are all your works, O God. We are your creation. We are in your hands. Our opening hymn this morning is In Christ There Is No East or West, number 687. Join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screens. Like a skilled potter, O God, you have shaped each one of us as a unique design. You know us better than we know ourselves. You value us more highly than we can imagine. You weep when we are marred or broken through our own misdeeds or the world's cruelty. We gather now to assemble our prayers for one another and all the world's people in a chorus of devotion. Hear us, gracious God. Amen. You may be seated. Come, all who have plugged your ears or averted your eyes when God commands, intrude on your idolatry. God calls individuals and nations to account. God expects our complete devotion and faithful obedience. How will we respond? Let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on our screens. Awesome God, we confess that we have become slaves to our own narrow self-interest. We pay more attention to our possessions than to you. We try to hide from your all-seeing eye, for we are guilty of devotion to false gods. We are attracted to wicked advice and sinful pursuits that direct our steps away from you. We act without thinking or planning or consulting with you. Oh God, show us the way to a better life. Amen. Let us now confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. Grace to you and peace from God, our parent. Refresh your hearts in Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is, the, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Receive the living water God offers to all who come in true repentance and searching faith. The Holy Spirit will never leave us or forsake us. 
Our helper is ever available and eager to respond to our prayers. Come, there is a place at God's banquet table for you. Please be seated. This is a time for our moments with the children. So kids, gather around your computer screens and listen as I have a little story to tell you. Now in today's apostle, or today's lesson, the apostle Paul writes to a friend, Philemon. And he says, I thank my God always making mention of you in my prayer. Paul gave thanks to God and he also prayed for his friend. Now, do you ever think about what we pray for? Why do we pray? Why do we pray? Well, I learned recently about an experiment that shows why it's important to pray. Patients in a hospital being treated for heart problems were divided into two groups. One group of patients was prayed for and the other group was not. Now, the patients did not know about this experiment and neither did their doctors who took care of them. After the experiment was over, Everyone was amazed to find that those patients who were prayed for got well faster and had fewer things go wrong than the patients who did not receive prayers. One doctor who saw the remarkable results and now devotes his life to telling others about the power of prayer to heal people. This lesson reminds us to pray for each other, just as Paul prayed for his friends. And that's my challenge for you. I want you to pray often for yourself, for your family, for your friends and for even for people that you don't know very well. And thank God always for every relationship that you have. Now, do you think you can do that? I bet you can. Let's pray. God of prayer, hear us when we pray so that our voice may be an instrument of your love for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our epistle lesson for this morning is from the book of Philemon, chapter 1, verses 1 through 21. Paul writes to a disciple and a congregation that have offered him love and support while he has been imprisoned, urging them to extend their concern even to those whom society deems outside their circle of concern, beginning in verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker to Aphia, our sister, to Acapus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank God, my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as the prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but as more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. 
I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me or your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you would do even more than I say. Here ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Jesus challenges his hearers to consider the cost of following his ways, warning them of the struggles to come and the necessity of unwavering dedication to his mission, beginning in verse 25. Now, large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Oh, what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Blessed are those who hear the word of our Lord and believe. Let us pray. God of freedom and of justice, help us to step up in the name of Jesus Christ to do what is needed to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to all who those, all of those in our midst and around the world, so that your kingdom can be realized as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, today's epistle lesson includes a story about a runaway slave named Onesimus. Onesimus belonged to Philemon, a brother in Christ to the Apostle Paul. It was believed that Philemon lived in Colossa, and Philemon's letter was delivered about the same time as Paul's letter to the Colossians. And while many of us have a big problem with our ancestral Christian roots allowing slavery, we have to admit the fact that slavery has been a big part of the Christian religion. Just as we understand that women were treated more like property than that of a human being in the time of Paul. And here we see slavery also treating human beings as less than human in our sacred scriptures. Slavery was permitted in most countries at that time, including Israel. Various circumstances could lead to sl slavery including being born of a slave, captured in battle, unable to pay one's debt, or breaking into someone's home. Slaves could be bought, sold, and even beaten. And yet, unlike other Roman territories, Israel did have some rules about the treatment of slaves. A master who beat a slave to death was subject to punishment. A master who permanently injured a slave was required to release that slave. And a man who married a woman who was taken captive in war and then became dissatisfied with her was not permitted to sell her, but was required to set her free. And while these rules did, did little to treat slavery anything like a human, it did, they, they did have some consequences with them. And while Paul doesn't argue the rationale against slavery, he does implore his friend Philemon to release Onesimus. Now, while in Rome, Paul is in prison, and while there, he becomes familiar with a, name, a man named Onesimus, only to realize that he has run away from Paul's own friend and brother in Christ, Philemon. Now, this puts Paul in a very awkward situation. Paul could be charged with aiding and abetting a runaway slave, 
even though Paul himself is in prison already. Because you see, Onesimus becomes a brother in Christ with Paul, and Paul aids, their, and he aids Paul in his imprisonment. So this sets up a scene where Paul writes to his brother in Christ, Philemon, to encourage him to do one of three things. One, send Onesimus back to Paul to assist him in proclaiming the gospel. Or two, release Onesimus upon his return as a brother in Christ. Or three, treat him with compassion and agape love while in his service. And yet Paul even goes a little further with his request. Paul agrees to pay Philemon anything that Onesimus owes, and he reminds him of what Philemon himself owes Paul for, such as his salvation and relationship with Christ. Paul pulls out all the stops in an attempt to save Onesimus from his decision to run away, which brings him, which could bring him some really horrible punishment. And even though Onesimus knows he could find himself in a situation worse than death, he returns to Philemon anyway. Now, unfortunately, we do not find out what Philemon's decision will be, but most believe that he would give in to Paul's request. You see, Paul is acting as a father to Philemon by bringing him to the gospel in the same manner Paul brings Onesimus. This makes Philemon and Onesimus brothers in Christ, a position that would be hard to maintain as slaves if one truly follows the teachings of Christ and appreciates what Paul has done for him. Now, in his letter, Paul may have been practicing the art of the possible, the art of the possible. While he couldn't abolish slavery, he could persuade Philemon to treat Onesimus with brotherly love. And rather than asserting his apostolic authority, he implores Philemon to tread lightly, lovingly with Onesimus. So, how does this story about slavery and a runaway slave impact our daily walk with life, or daily walk with God? Well, while slavery is outlawed in most of the industrialized world, sex trafficking is definitely a form of slavery and is very active in our world today. The KKK continues to be a Christian organization, and it still promotes the superiority of the white race, along with white supremacists and white nationalists. So does this scripture promote returning slaves to their abusers? Or maybe it suggests that slaveholders treat their slaves lightly and tenderly. Or maybe, just maybe it sends a loud message that brothers and sisters in Christ that no matter what their social status, race, disability, ethnicity, gender, age, or LGBT status is, they need to respect, honor, and love each other regardless. Racism in all of its, and all the other isms are far from over in this country. And as Dr. King once said, hatred paralyzes life. Love releases it. Hatred confuses life. Love harmonizes it. Hatred darkens life, and love illumines it. Although Paul couldn't eradicate slavery and hatred in his day, he did encourage one person at a time to give up, give it up in the name of Christ. And maybe that's a lesson for us today. We might not be able to change the world overnight, but we can change one person at a time, and eventually the whole world will be changed. It's time that we do our part and encourage those in our midst to put away hate, violence, and distrust one person at a time. Amen. Let us continue our service with a hymn of response. Sister, let me be your servant. Number 490 in the hymnal, on the screens, and on the walls.
seated. This is the time of our service. We want to remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, or on your coffee table. Anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This truly is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with uh, Marilyn Miller, who reports that Tara is returning to work tomorrow, Labor Day. Continued prayers for her as she returns to work. Also, prayers for Miss Cherry, as she has made a very, very difficult decision to close her preschool here at Trinity. She and her husband are looking forward to time together, so please keep Miss Cherry in your prayers as she moves into another chapter of her life. Don Hummel's stepfather, David Zellner, is having surgery on Tuesday to place bypass stents in his legs. So prayers for successful surgery, a quick recuperation, and comfort during his rehab. Alexis Faringer is asking for prayers for her cousin, John, who is having surgery on the 9th for his cancer, and for a family member named Pam who is going through a lot in her life right now. And finally, Alexis will be getting married this, next, this upcoming Saturday. So prayers for John and Pam and best wishes and God's blessings for her nuptials. Cliff Hellwood would like us to know that Sandy Buck surgery to remove her cancerous mass is on Thursday at Bloomsburg Hospital and the prognosis is very good. So prayers for successful surgery and a quick recuperation. Leroy Lucas would like us to know that his mother, Vera, has been moved to a manual nursing and rehab to regain her strength after breaking her hip. Prayers for continued healing and comfort. And Kathy and Luke Black would like us to keep their daughter, Becca, in prayer for kidney stones. Prayers for healing, comfort, and peace. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys or concerns to us through email, text, or phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. Now. Let us pray. Creator of all, you have demanded our complete devotion and obedience. You call for risk-taking loyalty and commitment that puts you before family and friends in our attention. We want to build the quality of life you intend for us and for all people. Show us how to become fully engaged as disciples of Jesus Christ. Help us to straighten out our priorities so we can witness faithfully to your will. As today, we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now, in a moment of silence, hear those prayers that are too, simply too private to speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we perceive all the good we may do for Jesus Christ, we are eager to share. Jesus welcomes into discipleship those willing to give up all their possessions. What we give today is a symbol of further devotion of all we are toward the realization of God's reign among us. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org or send a text with the amount you want to donate to 570-701-8479, 570-701-8479, and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best as you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their offering in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary.
Let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper. All are welcome at this table. You need not be a member of Trinity Reform UCC to participate in the, these to partake of these elements. Here we also allow children to partake in communion with the permission of their parents. For those online, we ask that you have your bread, cracker, or wafer available and your juice or wine prepared as well. We not only have bread, but we also have gluten-free wafers for anyone who needs that. I will come back and just motion to me and I will give that to you. Uh, the ushers will be giving the bread out, will be handing the bread out to you gloved. They'll have a glove on their hand and they'll hand the bread to you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. Therefore, this table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. In the presence of all who hunger with spiritual food, we come to this table, though the prison Christ, in the sharing of this life-giving meal. God be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, your son, our savior, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We celebrate Christ's life. We remember Christ's death and we rejoice in Christ's resurrection. We take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst and with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints and all the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name. seated. Now they were eating. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body. Jesus then took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples saying, drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. In, in the, the strength, strength Christ, Christ gives us, we, we offer ourselves to you, to you eternal God, God, and, and give, give thanks that, that you have called us to serve you. you. Amen. And through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for all things are ready. No, she has gluten-free. Feed my sheep.
the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. The dark, the dark liquid is wine, and the clear liquid is juice. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your most Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and on your screens. God welcomes your partnership in the gospel. Accept the cross of Christ and carry it. We, we have, have considered, considered the cost, cost of discipleship. discipleship. We are we willing and eager to pay the price. God expects to hold first place in our lives. We put everything we own on the line of faithfulness. We, we want, want to, to be, be obedient, obedient to the law of love. love. We, we want, want to, to show, show God's love in all we do. do. We are held in the thoughts of God. We are shaped and reshaped by the potter's hands. We are, we are finding, finding new patterns of faithfulness. faithfulness. We are We're discovering, discovering new, new seasons, seasons for, for joy. joy. Now, hear this pastoral benediction. Has racism ever affected you or your way of life? You see, we often don't see ourselves as racist. But even if we aren't, as white people, we are privileged. And we need to realize that fact. We didn't make the systemic racism or even the privilege. But we can use it. We can use our whiteness to help make the playing field equal. When we make things fair and equal for all, that is called justice. And whether we want to believe it or not, things that are not fair and equal in our world today. May we as Christians strive to find justice in our families, in our churches, and in our friends. And maybe someday 
will find it in our world too. Amen. Let us conclude our service today with our closing hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other, number 487 in the hymnal, on your screens and on the walls. Go in peace and have a wonderful holiday weekend.